Esto no sé. Y es algo que se quiere. Okay. Very good morning. My slides are visible. Yes, sir. Yeah, very good morning. And now we are in the third day of uh, the program. And so far we have discussed the design aspects and today onwards, so we are going to focus on the various 3D printing uh, processes. So in this session, so we are going to see the 3D printing say from polymers, ceramics, composites, and we have a dedicated session metals followed by Dr. Manjaya and uh, Professor E. Kumar. And of course, we have an application sessions also afterwards. So uh, up to now, we have covered the design aspects. And today onwards, we are going to see this uh, uh, processes and, and coming to the polymer ceramics composites. So if we, nowadays, uh, we don't have any bifurcation, say, stating that uh, that was the previous scenario. Say, if you see um, this technology started uh, 30 years ago, and at, at the time, um, we used to fabricate only polymers during that time. I'm talking about late, uh, uh, say, 80s and early. 90s. So during that time, so hardly we used to fabricate polymers, but slowly it has gained the attention towards, say, metals, ceramics, composites as well. So the uh, presentation outline so goes like this. So quickly you see the classification of 3D printing processes. So as we know that ASTM has recently standardized this classification into seven groups. And, and uh, you may wonder, uh, I said only the polymers, ceramics, and composites, by, but I have listed all the seven processes. Yes, so nowadays, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, fabricating, say, uh, but, but still it is not 100% saying that one machine, one process can capable of processing all four class of uh, engineering materials, but still, but still there, there will be a difficulty, but, but you can uh, do it in a two step uh, or a three step, but definitely you can get it. Uh, that is not a uh, problem here, but whether you are getting that processing of metals or processing of uh, ceramics in a, in a single step. Um, so that, that, that matters, but definitely you, you are able to produce uh, uh, these four engineering classification of materials. Um, so, but certain processes, it may be dedicated to metal like uh, DD system. So it may be dedicated to metals and powder bed. Yeah, it has uh, even a ceramics and it have even um, say metals or predominant, but even it can be processed, the ceramics can be processed. So like that, and if you see the other um, processes, anyway, we will um, uh, explore those uh, processes and the capable of uh, uh, the technology versus the materials that you could, uh, could be able to process. So we'll, we'll discuss all that. Um, and then followed by uh, say post-processing techniques, a little bit of post-processing techniques uh, I'm going to cover and at last the, uh, the fabrication challenges so that the current uh, um, 3D printing uh, industry or 3D printing practitioners are, are facing, um, say, that, that's the thing where um, I have planned for this session. So let us uh, 
uh, if you see the, of course, uh, the, the steps, uh, you are very much familiar by this time. So you have the broadly eight steps which we need to follow for any 3D printing process. So, uh, so coming to the, the today being a third day, we have already completed the CAD part and the STL conversion and file transfer to the machine that is a say uh, preparing the machine build setup anyway you are going to have a hands on today on this area and hopefully you have completed your first assignment uh, in this area these two steps and the four steps we have already completed the design aspects designed for ready to manufacturing or 3d printing so we have already covered these four steps and now onwards today onwards so we are going to talk about the build removal and of course post processing and at last the application stage so the, anyway we are going to cover everything in this uh, ftp and of course uh, uh, i think by this time you are very much familiar about these uh, uh, processes uh, the the steps involved in any 3d printing process but one thing we need to understand so what kind of raw material you are using it so that will dictate your post processing method so if it is a powder how you are going to remove the say loose powder or you are going to evacuate the powder from the melted part or if it is a, a vat system or liquid waste system so how you are going to uh, so take out your uh, part from the uh, vat uh, and so on so then the post processing method may vary from one process to other process uh, and of course you may use a different uh, uh, energy sources uh, uh, pertaining to these processes maybe laser maybe electron beam, maybe plasma, or maybe um, you may sheet or you may melt the, um, say, feedstock. So you, you have uh, to do that. And of course, you have a post-processing methods that we are going to see. So in brief, so these are the steps normally you come across. Uh, but here and there, it may differ the, the kind of uh, material, the kind of um, uh, feedstock form, the other aspects. So it's slightly there will be a difference, but uh, uh, all uh, 3D printing process, it should undergo these eight steps. So focus on the classification of uh, 3D printing process. And if you see this classification, the uh, early classifications or the, um, the previous or very beginning people used to classify that is before the ASTM has standardized this. So if you see the, uh, so the classification given by the Marshall Burns in 1993 or the Rath in 1998. So they, they have classified these systems based on the baseline so, technology. Uh, Shankarnath. Sai, can you meet him? So, they have classified this uh, 3D printing process uh, based on the baseline technology means. So, they have grouped all the technologies, uh, the energy sources, laser, they have classified them as a one group and printer based technology like whether they are um, that is using a jetting a binder or jetting a material through the um, say printer based technology so they have classified that as another group and other group uh, was extrusion based technologies they have classified in that way so there's basically the energy source or the baseline technology um, used by this 3d printing that was the earlier classifications given by these people and then in 1998, uh, further uh, the Chuva Chikai has uh, redefined classification into the feedstock form, the the initial form of the feedstock, whether it is a liquid and liquid based systems he has classified and solid based uh, systems and the powder based systems. So this was the a very popular classification, uh, and afterwards it does went why because uh, this author has wrote a book and it was a very popular. And then from more or less this classification was very uh, popular um, uh, uh, and then followed by uh, DT form and 2010. So he has slightly uh, modified the classification. So he has introduced the 
the uh, next, uh, the third dimension with the channel 1d channel whether your process uh, is a one dimensional channel like a single point laser or, or a extrusion nozzle a single extrusion nozzle so like that so this is a 1d channel uh, is given but again the the liquid discrete particles molten material and solid state uh, uh, sheets so these are the raw material form and and in addition to that he has added this uh, the whether uh, that process uh, follows a one dimensional um, channel or say one into one dimensional channel means uh, dual lasers or a dual source of energy so the they have classified in that manner and then the array of 1d channels means you have say uh, several nozzle heads so simultaneously uh, printing the material or a binder so you you have uh, that is a array of 1d channels it's more quicker right say if you see the um, the the productivity uh, the build rate so instead of a single laser dual laser so instead of a dual 1d channel which is totally one, one dimensional channel means entire channel you, you can uh, print it some more faster and further it has been so 2d channel means so you have uh, like a mask based technology or a your dlp based te technology so you, you you are able to um, say produce a single layer at a time so it's a more quicker even clip process or you have other processes which you can directly uh, expose a single layer uh, it's more quicker right say you have a 2d channel so can it be 3d channel uh, yeah maybe maybe you can expect um, say a, a kind of a holograph uh, kind of a technique where you can even uh, produce uh, entire 3d model in a single go maybe maybe we don't know we can see very soon maybe three dimensional channel here uh, also like the, this is the classification given by the um at dt form uh, 2010 and subsequently astm has standardized uh, these uh, uh, processes into seven groups uh, so by giving a certain names like directed energy deposition so and then powder bed fusion binder jetting material extrusion material jetting sheet lamination and vat photopolymerization process so you can see um, each each process you have a uh, uh, say material material compatibility. If you have a directed energy deposition, so you can go with the metals. You can process ceramics, and coming to powder bed system, even you can process polymer metals. Even sand can be processed, and binder jetting you can process sand, metal, ceramics, and material exclusion you can process polymers. So you can process food, and you can process uh, living cells. So you have a material ex exclusion. And, and material jetting system, you can process polymers, wax, sheet lamination, you can process metals and organic materials. And vat based system, you can process, uh, um, say, polymers as well as syrup. So, so uh, and you can see from the illustrations. Uh, so, but let it be like uh, any process. So, we need to understand, uh, say, uh, three things. One is what is the energy source uh, so that you are using it? And, and what is the form of uh, feedstock? The, the the initial form of the feedstock and and what is the bonding mechanism so how you are getting the bonding so between the layers or within the layer uh, how you are going to get the bonding so that that matters so these three things which we need to understand uh, and then you you are uh, uh, very much say uh, understood once you and then what is the surrounding uh, and of course the other one is once you make the part and what is your surrounding of the part means whether it is a uh, say uh, again surrounded with uh, a powder loose powder or it is a liquid or it is a uh, open to air or it is a an inert environment is surrounded or a vacuum so which we need to why because so it will dictate your properties uh, once you um, say fabricate it so then you have to understand this so once you understand this so then you, you are able to say, so then we can certify that you, you understood everything and just you can further uh, so understand the, the physics involved and the interaction of your energy uh, with your feedstock material. So how it is getting say formed or in processed, how it's getting processed. So then that's the thing where we need to understand, right? Say, and coming to, the uh, materials, uh, 
you have polymers when you can go with the thermoset thermoplastics or even thermoset plastics can also be processed to metals metal alloys ceramics composites and functional materials like electronic shape memory and so on and biological materials food and other uh, natural materials can also be uh, printed so as we discussed like the either the raw material or the feedstock may be in a powder powder form or a filament form or a sheet form or a liquid form and as we know that it has been standardized by the ISO ASTM combinedly so 529005 so this, this is the uh, kind of um, standardization of uh, the uh, classification given by the ASTM and you may have the uh, proprietary names or the commercial names of uh, the technologies uh, but you try to uh, say uh, acquire these names rather than these why because this is uh, um, uh, commercial uh, names or the proprietary names uh, uh, the vendor who develops that and then you may use that name but this is the uh, terminology is given by the ASTM and you try to um, say uh, acquired with this terminology rather than that terminology. And of course, uh, uh, I know the uh, the previous speaker has given elaborately the material aspects, uh, but let me just summarize so what the polymers uh, under the polymer groups. So you have again the thermoplastics, so you have semi-crystalline amorphous and, and you have the semi-crystalline, so you have a PLA, PE, PP. That is a basic level of uh, application like a commodity application where normally you print at the lower temperatures means these materials are melted with relatively lower temperatures and the performance is low and the cost is also less so if you see this um, the base of this uh, pyramid and if you come to the middle of the pyramid where you have engineering materials it's uh, um, relatively um, say high temperature means relatively if you compare this and the melting point temperatures may be like nylon or PA polyamide so with slightly higher temperatures you work and obviously you can go with the higher uh, applications like engineering applications apart from your uh, commodity or uh, so your domestic applications even engineering applications uh, can be accommodated through this uh, materials and high performance if you are looking at like peak or PA so then you can uh, have these options um, uh, in the in the polymers so this is a thermo uh, uh, plastics and coming to thermosets, so you have plenty of epoxy resins, acrylate based uh, resins uh, to, to process. And coming to metals, uh, uh, these are the um, well known uh, materials people have been using it, or uh, still it need not restrict it to these uh, say materials. So you can develop your own material, uh, and, and, and the most critical part, part uh, uh, yesterday also we were discussing. So how do you uh, say build your uh, uh, process parameters uh, for your particular material? So not all the materials, uh, uh, the vendor uh, or the supplier may not be giving this, but you have, you can, uh, you can develop your own material. You can um, say establish your own parameters. So then uh, these are some of the uh, metals and the metal alloys uh, frequently uh, or very well known materials stainless steel you have 316 or 31074 um bh or you have say marazing steel or h13 a2 aluminum so 10 mg 8 mg you can you can, can have a plenty of uh, say compositions uh, alloys which you can try out and titanium 6564 and eli you have several and cobalt chrome also you have cobalt chrome based uh, um, alloys you can you can have a uh, better applications in, in medical and other applications and tungsten nickel based alloy like the Inconel 625, Inconel 718, has alloy, copper, gold, silver and so on. Nowadays, uh, these are the metals and coming to the ceramics, so you have a zirconia, so you have a silica nitrate, uh, alumina, alumina tough with uh, zirconia, silica, and hydroxyapatite, like you have calcium phosphate uh, and the quadrate. So these are some of the ceramics, uh, the most uh, uh, often used ceramics. Um, uh, the, as we know that the difficulty with the ceramics, uh, so to process, so, uh, but still there will be several challenges to process the ceramics. Um, so though you have uh, 
uh, say these well known or well established uh, materials ceramic materials for 3d printing uh, processing and composites you have frp like uh, plastics onyx nylon and continuous fibers uh, carbon fiber kevlar fiberglass hsst and metal matrix composites so these are the composites uh, you can uh, develop and you can process on the 3d printing technology and other materials like wax and glass concrete even living cells skin food and you can you know, this is the beauty of uh, the 3d printing technology where you can customize your material like even it could be uh, a sort of uh, um, say mentioned here so it could be a, a, a thing which we need to uh, work on and even you have a multi material uh, objects like you have uh, functionally graded materials you can you can vary the compositions and you can very well uh, say fabricate this kind of uh, thing where you you have a unique uh, capabilities uh, of the 3d printing practice like which you can go with the fgms or metal matrix composites so you can you can do um, say grading of these alloys so either through your ded system or even um, you 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 can very well do this uh, i think the uh, upcoming speakers is going to talk about these uh, uh, issues but uh, anyway i am i may be focusing just i want to give a, a, a overview of these materials so and then i, I already said like whether uh, it, it could be done in a single step your polymers can be done in a single step yeah if you see this is some of the single step uh, uh, polymer processing uh, like uh, what is the type of material here it's a polymer and the state of fusion whether you are using a thermal bonding or a chemical reaction bonding so then what kind of a material feedstock you are using it like a filament or a, or a melted material or a, or a powder material or a liquid material or sheet material so you you have a material feedstock in several uh, forms and and what is the material how you are distributing this material maybe you may use nozzle or you may use print head or you, you, you may use powder bed to um, say spread like a bed uh, or you may use a, a print heads to print this liquid or you you you, you keep it in a vat or, or, or a sheet stock so you, you have um, uh, how do you get distribute this material you, you have this and the basic principle involved uh, if you have this deposition nozzle so you have the extrusion of the melted material print heads to multi-jet uh, material printing you do uh, and you may do a selectively fusing the powder particles or, or you may jet the binder uh, onto the powder so see binding of the powder particles should be done and then a liquid reaction so that is the photopolymerization curing process may take place or the fusion of stacking of the uh, sheets so then if you see um, the almost all the seven uh, say uh, class of uh, uh, say manufacturing can be done through this uh, uh, so except DED so DED is meant for exclusively for uh, say metals so as we understood and even you, you have except DED system so everything can be so all, all the uh, all six uh, except DED so can be able to process your polymers in a single step so so this is uh, the kind of polymer processing that you could do it uh, in a single step and coming to a single step ceramics so ceramics can be done in a single step so either use a solid state uh, uh, ceramic during a fusion or solid plus melted state and you have the feedstock maybe a powder and the liquid suspension or a powder and polymer mix mixer or it may be a powder material or this material uh, distribution so it can be the ceramic powder plus binder can be distributed or maybe powder bed uh, through the powder bed your ceramic has been say uh, distributed and the basic principle you may selectively fuse the particles from the green uh, part and say uh, or you, you do a selective fusion of the particles in a powder bed and then you, you have the basically the, the powder bed category where you can directly produce a single step in ceramics uh, and of course single step metals uh, but anyway uh, though uh, i didn't put this metal but just an understanding so the metals uh, can can be done in a single go you, you, you have a very good number of systems here like uh, say a powder bed system or directed uh, deposition system material jetting even so sheet lamination so you can produce in a single step the metal parts like either you do um, melting state or solid plus melting state or 
solid state and you have the uh, filament wire material or the powder material or sheet material so your material distribution it can be through an, a deposition through the nozzle or a powder bed or a sheet stacks or even the basic principle you have selectively depositing the material to the substrate or you will be selectively fusion fusing the materials in the powder bed or fusion of the sheets and the source of fusion either you may get through an electron beam laser or inductive heating or uh, electron beam laser ultrasonic uh, say welding can also be used here to to stack uh, the anyway we are going to um, say the subsequent uh, speakers are going to explore this uh, uh, just i want to give an an idea uh, anyway i am talking about the polymer ceramics and composites so then then that that's the intention i kept it here we are going to see an insights of this metal 3D printing in a subsequent uh, sessions. And coming to uh, the multi-step means, uh, which you, you may not be able to produce in a single step, means you may get only the green part, um, or it may be a composite material which joins your polymer uh, addition, means we need to do a certain furnace treatment, or you, you need to do a, a infiltration process to complete your, say, 100%, uh, say, dense or, or the solid part. So, Coming to this multi-state uh, uh, ceramic or even metal or composites can be done in a multiple stage. So then again, the principle of the adhesion may be a thermal bonding or a chemical reaction bonding. And the material feedstock may be uh, the composite material uh, sheets or the, or the powder particles, so the foundry sand or a ceramic powder or a metal powder, and you have a liquid or, or a powder feedstocks. Or the material distribution, like again, a sheet, um, a, a sheet stacks or powder bed or a vat. So, and then the basic principle, the fusion of stacking uh, in case of a sheet stacks or powder, it can be a selectively bonding the meta metallic uh, uh, things, uh, materials in the powder bed, maybe a ceramic, maybe a metal, maybe a, a composite. And the either it may be a solvent, uh, say a reactive curing, um, so, in some of the uh, process, and even it could be a light reactive uh, uh, photo curing that is uh, where you can find with the VAT based system. So, means your process category means like you go with the sheet lamination, powder bed, directed and uh, jetting, binder jetting, and uh, the VAT based photopolymerization process. So, you could be able to produce a green part. So, then further you um, adapt a furnace sintering or infiltration with infiltration without infiltration. So you're going to get your complete your uh, same processing of your ceramics uh, or, or the metals or the composites. So, so in multiple steps. So then what we need to understand here, whether you are able to directly producing your uh, uh, say ceramic parts or a composite, or composite part or polymer parts in a single step, or we need to further process uh, why because you may be getting only the green part uh, or the composite material to join your polymer binder. So then, which we need to do a debinding or which we need to do a, a furnace treatment and the infiltration. So that we need to understand. So then with this background, so let us focus on to the, uh, uh, the processes. So, so the, the um, say coming to the VAT based uh, photopolymerization process. So in fact, this was the um, uh, first technology who invented uh, the, uh, this technology by Czech Hull. So this was the first technology uh, which you famously known as SLA, that is uh, um, say uh, stereolithography operators. So I hope you may be uh, familiar about uh, this process. Uh, um, uh, say you do have say here. Um, so you you have um, say laser. So um, you come out with a kind of a VAT based system. The, the name suggests, so you are taking the raw material into a VAT. So means you have a liquid tank, the raw material is taken. So normally it is a polymer, it's a thermoset a kind of a polymer, it's an epoxy resin. So that epoxy resin, it's a photosensitive polymer resin. So then you will be exposing it, or you have a scanning galvanometric uh, mirror control here. So on, onto the surface of the liquid, so it is getting scanned and it's getting cured. So because of the polymerization process, the powder chemistry involved here. So your um, monomers is uh, uh, due to the chain reaction. So it will become a polymer and where you are getting the curing of that. Uh, so, and then you have a flat form will uh, uh, say come down to the uh, that layer thickness 
uh, height and then like second layer and third layer like the, it will go but as i already mentioned like you you have um, a, a a kind of a 1d channel and then you you have say a, a, a kind of a dlp uh, system or you, you instead of a, a scanning galvanometric uh, say galvanometric uh, optical scanner so you have a dmd so digital micromirror devices and which it is getting scanned so where you, when you are going to get more what you call uh, it, it, it is like a projector instead of a laser single point laser beam so it has been um, say replaced with a lamp or a projector so where your entire layer can be cured uh, with this uh, dmd uh, kind of a, a controller and with your uh, say um, the the lamp or, or, or the projector that you are projecting the light onto this surface of the liquid surface of your uh, thing so this is the typical operation then where it has been started with uh, the uh, sla technology that is stereolithography operators and now you have a dlp uh, and and incidentally you have both in a desktop nature of machines like dlp so you have uh, curing is done through a projector here rather than a laser and even you have uh, the cdlp that's a continuous digital lip, uh, light processing you, you have a narrow difference between these two so you you have oxygen permeable uh, layer here which you are trying to say build here and it's more faster than so if you see the um, the speed so uh, it is almost like uh, say maybe 10 times maybe 15 times faster than the the first generation uh, machines you, you have this dlp or the kind of a uh, cdlp so where you, you have the the productivity has been improved so i will try to play a video for your better understanding if it comes i don't know dlp laser and lcd are the three main technology types for desktop 3d printing and dentistry to understand how they work, we need to know something about how 3D printers see 3D models. When you send a 3D model to your printer, the software slices it into hundreds of two-dimensional layers. Your printer sees a print as hundreds or thousands of these image layers that it will print one on top of the other until the model is complete. The chemistry of 3D printing resins means that each printed layer sticks to the build platform, but not to the resin tank. Once a layer is complete, the build platform lifts slightly and then a new layer is drawn on top of the previous. This process repeats over and over until eventually the models are completely built. Although DLP, laser, and LCD all follow the same basic process, they differ in how they deliver light to the photopolymer resin, and this divergence makes all the difference. Let's take a closer look. DLP printers use a light projector, similar to what you would find in a movie theater, to project the image of an entire layer simultaneously, regardless of the number of parts. Because they cure a full layer in a single flash, DLP printers can be outstandingly fast. They are also very reliable, with low complexity and no moving parts. Sprintray Pro is powered by a DLP projector of our own design, enabling it to 3D print models quickly and with outstanding accuracy. LCD printers use a screen, similar to the one on your smartphone, to project the image of an entire layer at once. In this way, LCD printers are quite similar to DLP. They can even share materials. But LCD panels have a few key drawbacks. The light used to cure resin is damaging to the organic compounds in LCD screens. Therefore, most LCD printers treat their light source as a consumable, requiring frequent, costly replacement. Laser printers use a pin dot of high-intensity light to draw each layer. This process is similar to using a fine-tipped pencil to draw on paper. The laser rapidly moves across the resin tank, drawing the details of each layer as it goes. The laser must fill in the entire area with a pin dot of light, which limits the speed of the printer, especially when printing multiple parts at once. TLP, laser, and LCD printers are all used in dentistry. So, in this way, it will work. So, and coming to the so the projector, as I already instructed uh, in the video, selective see the materials that you can process 
So you have a different material like rigid, flexible, colored, high temperature, so dental grade, ceramics, so metals and, and, and even metals and ceramics, uh, even it should be followed by sintering. Uh, we will we'll discuss that further why? because it's it's it, it not only uh, restrict to the polymer, though it has started with the polymer, but now it has been extended to metals as well as ceramics. So that we will discuss uh, soon. So you have a different uh, uh, the configurations of this uh, um, SLA uh, based uh, systems like you 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 have a uh, from the form labs uh, you you have a desktop based uh, uh, laser scanning systems so it is very uh, compact uh, and then the build volumes are relatively it may be um, say small maybe 145 by 145 by 185. So the cost is also very less here. Nowadays, you can get these uh, uh, printers maybe around three lakhs or uh, two lakhs or three lakhs uh, with the price. And you have even LCD or uh, LED based projectors. Even it could be even further uh, uh, reducing the cost, maybe around one lakh, two lakhs. Also, you can be able to get these machines. Like the build volume may be smaller, uh, and then you have industrial grade, uh, uh, say SLA based system from 3D systems where it may be. You can produce a bigger build size, uh, uh, 650 by 750 by 550, but maybe a bit costly. Uh, it is an industrial grade printers, but these are desktop based printers where you can even afford uh, for your, uh, say, education purpose. Maybe you can have these printers. Uh, then, then you have uh, the uh, the ceramics can also be done. How how you are able to um, make the ceramics? So, so then. Uh, this is the uh, technology. I will play the video, but it may not done through a single step. So it should be uh, followed by sintered sintering of your ceramic part. So, but basically, it works with the same principle. Like you, you, you have a say. Um, so the the projector will be projecting from here. You have a DLP projector here, and you have a foil, and you have a slurry. You are mixing your uh, say uh, epoxy. Um, plus the uh, say ceramic slurry, you make a slurry of ceramic plus a photo uh, uh, re uh, resin, and then you you will be uh, again the working principle is same. So and then it should be further followed by the uh, say debinding. I'll play this video for better understanding. In this way, it is getting printed. So you, you, your ceramics, uh, even it, it could be even applicable for the metals also. You, you, you uh, instead of ceramic powder, you bring the metal powder and make a slurry, and and it can be done for the metals also. So which we we, we have now these kind of uh, recent advancements. So you doesn't think that the metal printing or ceramic printing could be done through a powder bed based system or a DED based system. I mean, even it could be done through uh, a, a kind of SLA or a DLP based systems. 
so your ceramics or even for the case for the metals also right and you you have another uh, say system which it will produce the ceramics which you can see these are the bone augment, augmentation and the dental restorations so you you have a very good application of ceramics in dentistry so you, you can even uh, it it works with the same principle just the previous uh, um, say uh, video shows the you, you have a photo curable slurry so which is mixed with uh, the ceramic and you have a D, dm d kind of a lights uh, exposure system here and which we need to further follow with the d binding and sintering and you can go with uh, aluminum oxide you can go with the zirconium oxide you can go with the silicon nitride and hydroxyapatite so you have a dry ca calcium phosphate and silica based ceramics and so on so the, the, this is uh, which it will come under a dlp based system so which it is um, we can produce a bio uh, resorbable uh, kind of a ceramics so which you can understand uh, see the the we make a note of uh, these developments of uh, 3d printing uh, say they doesn't think that uh, so it will maybe restricted to the polymer though this uh, group of uh, uh, 3d printing process started with the polymers but you can you can get it uh, the ceramics as well metals but it may not be in a single step which it should be done followed by debinding sintering infiltration sometimes so we, we need to say you, you are able to get it but your cost is also reducing drastically right say you have um, say uh, the other hand the powder bed system or a de system is much costlier but now even you can try with these uh, uh, kind of technologies to process ceramics or metals so it is uh, more um, say economical so you can even say do this right say and you see the recent developments. Uh, so there is an increased, uh, say, demand or increased uh, proliferation of uh, ELP or LCD or uh, LED based technology under this uh, VAT based uh, uh, category. And you have a new photopolymer materials, which is mimicking the engineering photopolymers. And you have uh, expiration of your initial SLA patents. That's what you have uh, the all, say, uh, uh, desktop based uh, systems like you can have a DSM or a 3D systems, their patents, uh, uh, infringements, and the uh, say so you, you, you have a lot of uh, say close uh, the open architecture kind of machines uh, and, and the open sourceness of your software. So it is uh, um, making even uh, anybody can afford, right? Say it is not like uh, say lags together when it was uh, came into picture. Um, so then it was even polymer printing itself like SLA system, like SLA 250 model or a, uh, or a FDM 1650 model. So that was, I'm talking about during say, um, late, uh, eighties and early seven nineties. Uh, so even the cost of the polymer 3d printer was also in lakhs, maybe 20 lakhs during that time. So 15 lakhs I'm talking about during nine, 80, 88, 89. 90 time i'm talking about but now because of that patent see, nobody can hold that patent in such a long time maybe 20 years 25 years 30 years now uh, the the key patents are getting ex expired so that's what it has become reached to a common person you can start duplicating replicating the technology so nobody no restrictions right so why because the the, the the patent has become null and, null and void right so and anyway, so you, you have a renewed interest in, in, in two photon polymerizations. So this is the latest development, which I didn't uh, cover it, but you, you can you can go with the micro sized components uh, through this uh, two photon polymerization process. So that is the a renewed interest uh, under this VAT based system category. So these are some of the recent developments that you can talk about VAT based system and coming to the material jetting system. So what is the difference between the material jetting and the VAT based system? The material is same, so like the photosensitive polymer, but don't bring it in a vat, just you jet from the nozzle. So that is only the difference here, but it remains same, the, the photopolymerization process. Basically, it works with the uh, photopolymerization process. So you, 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 have the matter, you have the plastic, though this technology started with the plastic and followed by a wax, so, so that is a, a drop-on demand technology. Uh, and now it has been attracted, metals also can be done through a material jetting system right say that that's what where this technology and now um even no more people are saying that the metal printing is so costly no why because you can even see the metal printing may be possible through the vat system 
as well as material jetting system, right? So uh, anyway, for the better understanding, I play this video for them how the material jetting system will work. So the biggest advantage of this uh, technology, you, you have a dedicated nozzles. So you can dedicate it, uh, say, some set of nozzles to one material, and you can dedicate other set of nozzles to the other material. So that is the biggest say, advantage of this kind of uh, material jetting system. So uh, as uh, even in the uh, video demonstrated, like how you were, uh, say, uh, polymers, um, which will be giving it different colors when um, say and then more transparent transparency in the um, say uh, material property in you know, epoxy resin and and you can even print the colors uh, say millions of colors uh, can be printed um, say uh, even this is the multi jet uh, printing uh, technology so you have photopolymers plus wax can also be like so support materials typically wax based uh, thing here uh, even you can have you, you, how how you are going to use your nozzles maybe for the supporting material or maybe for the multiple material purpose which you are using it and anyway you, you can even do um say ceramics can also be done even metals can also be done here with uh, the nanoparticle jetting system so we will we, we'll discuss that and even um aerosol jet printing is also another kind of uh, technology where even you can print the uh, electronic um, circuitry or the antennas for the small uh, the smartphone. So this is uh, the aerogel technology where when um, you can have an atomizer here and you can say uh, place your ink in the jar and atomize it to create the small droplets. Uh, so once you atomize uh, here and you send that uh, say uh, thing to this uh, uh, say once you atomize and now it is getting 
say atomized here and it has been sent to the uh, so then you, you we need to remove uh, certain uh, entrapped gases here that will be done uh, here so you have this excess gas to say uh, make it very dense uh, uh, mist after removing that gases entrapped gases now you have a dense mist now it has been deposited from uh, the deposition head so you have a, a, a sheet gas focusing on this arrow mist into this uh, beam and we'll be depositing so yeah broadly it will come under the material jetting process so now you could even able to make a sort of circuitry or electronic applications and even coming to the um say how do you get printed the ceramics like alumina or zirconium ceramics can even it will be printed this is ceramic uh, a little bit so i will play this video you can better understand particle jetting manufacturing high strength metal parts with the ease and versatility of inkjet based additive manufacturing Here's how it works. The challenge is to enable metal to be deposited in liquid form so it can be jetted from standard inkjet nozzles. To do this, the XJet system uses nano-sized metal particles suspended within our patented liquid formula. Eliminating inefficient lasers, this metal liquid formula can be jetted from standard printing heads to create a revolution in metal additive manufacturing. The metal materials are packaged within specially adapted cartridges that are loaded easily by hand into the XJet system. Because there's no powder vat, XJet uses only the material that you need, saving space and eliminating the need to handle metal powders. With your STL design file on screen, you're now ready to print your metal part. The print head deposits a fine layer of metal liquid droplets onto the system build tray. With each pass of the print head, the metal part builds up as the tray descends. The metal liquid formula is jetted from many thousands of printing nozzles simultaneously in a process that's up to five times faster than laser metal printers. Within the system's build envelope, a temperature of up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit or 300 degrees Celsius causes the liquid jacket around the metal nanoparticles to evaporate, allowing the stochastic metal particles to bind strongly and with virtually the same metallurgy and density as traditionally made metal parts. With layer thicknesses under two microns, the result is never before seen levels of detail, surface finish and accuracy with no compromise on speed or build time. Welcome to a new era in metal additive manufacturing. So even it could be uh, done through metal or the same thing for the ceramics also. So it's in the video it has been demonstrated as a uh, metal, but it is very well, uh, say, suited for the ceramics. That's what th these are the evidence of the parts. So which it has been, say, printed. This is steel and ceramic, it's unsintered bond. So then, uh, which we need to uh, followed by a sintering step uh, to to enable you to. Uh, Parts from the physical properties. Um, and coming to the recent developments, there is material jetting system. So statuses has merged with the object, and and many traditional 3D printer companies are gaining a lot of attention towards uh, investigating the 3D printing um, uh, machines and and thermoplastics and visco viscosity is the major issue, as we know that for jetting of this material. Um, and the metals, colors, and significant interest in printing the electronics. That's what we have seen uh, with the previous, uh, uh, say, slides. So these are some of the, say, recent developments in the material jetting uh, process. And coming to the next one is the binder jetting system. So 
then there is a slight difference uh, between this uh, uh, material jetting and the binder jetting system. So the name suggests that you may be jetting the binder rather than a material. So then what about material? So material might be taken as a powder and then it will be spread like a bed and then you jet the binder onto the, um, say, the powder uh, uh, material. So you, you, you have here as a powder has been spread through this um, say roller and you are now you are, you are jetting the binder from this nozzles. So then you are going to get the bonding. So though it started with the um, polymers initially. Uh, now the HP is the new entrant in this with the multi jet fusion technology. Um, like the fused uh, fused based agent uh, will be used here, and of course uh, you, you have metals and ceramics can also be done through this binder jetting system. Though this started with the predominantly polymers initial stages. Uh, but now with the new entrant like HP, so they are much focusing on the colored uh, parts, but again, that may be from the plastic colored parts. Even you can, you can find out from other uh, people uh, like Vaxaljet or like X1. So all these are, uh, uh, this technology has originated from MIT, the great MIT university, and then they sold the patents to um, different companies like Z Corp uh, and then Vaxeljet, X1, all these companies now. Uh, the, but, but the uh, the root cause of this technology, the the patents initially, it was with uh, MIT University. But now you, you can find several players are coming in, in this area, and then that's binder jetting. Now it's more popular for producing very big sized components. So, so I will try to play the video maybe for better understanding of the uh, people who comes first to this kind of uh, technology. So you can um, say find um, very good applications or the material developments in the recent times. Of course, the basic technology has been discussed even the inkjet uh, printer, so which you will be jetting uh, ink and further when you may have IR light to uh, say expose it and then sintering the polymers. Uh, you you can even make this, I think I will play this video for your better understanding uh, in, in this HP technology. If you are. To produce truly functional parts, it's important to ensure that the material has been properly fused and that part edges are smooth and well-defined. To achieve part quality at speed, HP invented a multi-agent printing process. In this process, a fusing agent is applied on a material layer where the particles are meant to fuse together. A detailing agent is applied to modify fusing and create fine detail and smooth surfaces. The area is exposed to energy 
and reactions between the agents and the material cause the material to selectively fuse together to form the part. The fusing process requires accurate temperature control across the entire material layer. So even um, you can even process ceramics. So you can uh, process the ceramics where you can see this is ceramic hot box and this is the juice and it's this made out of the ceramics. And you can see some of the parts here that have been printed through ceramic. Uh, uh, but here again, we need to um, go a, a, not in a single step like you do depinding and sintering and ultimately you, you are going to get this kind of uh, ceramic parts say that could be a silicon carbide alumina charconia so boron carbide so these are the ceramics that it could be printable through this kind of a bioenergetic system so these are the some of the technologies that you can able to print the ceramics uh, with the bioenergetic system and if you see the recent developments like 3D systems has purchased the Z Corp and has changed the marketing strategy. And X1 now has been uh, pushing the sand printing and, and build metal parts of shape phase. Shape phase is one of the um, say service provider like where you can even customize your uh, say designs. So this is basically one of the service providers they they have an X1, X1 like the as I already mentioned, MIT has sold the patents to X1, Voxeljet, but basic technology was with the MIT people, the binder dating. Earlier they used to call us 3D printing. Now they have a visionary, they have, they have named this 3D printing technology for this binder dating system way back in 31 years uh, ago. They, they named it as a 3D printing now we have using that word, but that is a visionary of uh, great people like from MIT. But anyway, so you, you have the voxel jet, um, F-cubic, and these are the marketing places where they dynamically say, the reasons like you have a lot of expiration in the patents, uh, again, it has become uh, opening up your market and, and continuously building platform designs as well as a major so ramification. These are some of the developments under this binder dating, um, say, scenario. I'm coming to most excited extrusion based system, why? Because if you ask anybody if you are using a 3D printer, means yes, then you can expect 80% of the people are maybe using extrusion based system. The reason is it's very um, cheap and very the maintenance is also uh, uh, free, uh, very less maintenance of this extrusion based system. So it's a very well known, um, say, material extrusion based system called FDM that is fused partial molding. So though it has been started with the uh, say thermoplastics like ABS or PLA, but now it has been uh, very popular towards the composites or even metals for your surprise or even ceramics can also be done to a material extrusion process. So for the uh, initial uh, understanding of this material extrusion based system, like uh, I'll play this video, Bobby, you may come across uh, this is a well-known technology. Fused deposition modeling, or FDM, is a layer additive manufacturing process that uses production grade thermoplastic materials to produce both prototype and end-use parts. This technology is known to accurately produce feature details and has an excellent strength-to-weight ratio. FDM is ideal for concept models, functional prototypes, manufacturing aids, and low-volume end-use parts. The FDM process begins by slicing 3D CAD data into layers. The data is then transferred to a machine, which constructs the part layer by layer upon a build platform. Thin thread-like spools of thermoplastic and support material are used to create each cross-section of the part. Similar to a hot melt glue gun, uncoiled material 
is slowly extruded through dual heated nozzles. The extrusion nozzles precisely lay down both support and thermoplastic material upon the preceding layers. The extrusion nozzle continues to move in a horizontal XY plane while the build platform moves down, building the part layer by layer. The finished part is removed from the build platform and cleaned of its support material. Raw FDM parts have visible layer lines. However, service providers such as Solid Concepts offer multiple finishing options to create smooth, even surface parts including hand sanding assembly, and cosmetic paint. Since FDM parts are constructed with production-grade thermoplastics, including ABS, polycarbonate, and Ultim, they are both functional and durable. FDM is utilized in a number of industries, including aerospace, automotive, industrial, commercial, and medical. So, in this way, you can produce your uh, parts uh, so, so it was started with the um, say thermoplastic kind of uh, materials like PLA, ABS. Even it also now this is the uh, now for metal ceramics fiber fillers. Now it is also possible through this technology. So I, I hope you may come across different uh, uh, say configurations of your. Um, um, say desktop based printers uh, like a partition delta or you have a rep wrap kind of a diy kind of a printer which you can find uh, so you have more lightweighted uh, uh, structures that can be done through an all-term material uh, peak or a peg kind of a material is also available with uh, this kind of uh, uh, material extrusion process so you have a thermoplastics and you have a composites also just now we are talking about the 3d composites the just been embedded a continuous fiber uh, a carbon fiber uh, kind of a composites or carbon fiber filled with the thermoplastic um or even you can go with the ceramics but as i already mentioned it requires a debinding and sintering it should be followed it's not in a single step you are going to get the metal or a ceramic but it should be a further than the debinding and sintering step. Um, and even you can uh, see as some of the uh, other materials, maybe a clay based kind of a thing, so which you can be used for a kind of a clay printers, uh, um, which it has been, say, very popular clay or a kind of a ceramics can also be done through this kind of uh, 3D water part kind of a printers and which you can find some of the uh, the uh, the parts has been done through a ceramic uh, uh, material so which you can see um, this is the alumina or zirconia kind of a uh, said ceramic filaments or you can find silicon carbide fiber the the filaments and you can find nitrate silicon nitrate uh, filaments of course, stainless steel and tung tungsten carbide can also be in the, in, the, in the metals. So you do a debinding, as I already said, in, in acetone and sintering between 1200 to 1500 degrees three, so which you can have the plastic is removed and you have a pure ceramic uh, parts. So you, you have this is uh, say 80% can contain ceramics, right? And further you do this step and you can have these uh, ceramic Parts, so which you can even able to produce the ceramics, and of course the composites so through uh, extrusion based system, right? So you have um, the carbon or the ceramic uh, fiber reinforced composite materials, which is a uh, layered or three D uh, one kind of structures. Which you can see, this is a carbon fiber uh, is brained onto an, an aircraft component, which you can see. This is the case study from the Airbus. So where, uh, how they are making use of these composites that are getting printed through uh, 3D printing. And even the leap fan blade, uh, this is one of the uh, aero component. Uh, so they use this kind of a composite and is a uh, resin transfer molding has been done. So this is one of the, um, say, uh, 
uh, aerospace application when you can see the automobile application so this is from mark forge so mark forge they uh, have a high strength uh, brake levers so which is made out of uh, really uh, composite uh, uh, printer embedding into continuous uh, carbon fibers so the, these are the things where it is almost like uh, the uh, substitute for the metal parts why because it have you know the strength of composites so, so now it is uh, now 3d printable now uh, earlier it was not the scenario now this technology is now fabricating the composites through material extrusion based system is also popular and and uh, say maturing uh, day by day and see the recent developments of this material extrusion based system so the expiration of again the fdm patents uh, that is uh, filed by the scott crumb so those uh, patents were expired and you have a diy kind of a printers now say either it could be a uh, 1000 dollars to 2000 dollars uh, uh, versus uh, uh, say 10k to 200k for the commercial machines that is uh, say 10 times or 100 times uh, costlier um, than the your DIY kind of uh, machines. It's more cheaper, like which you can make use of for your education purpose, right? So you may not be looking for then in the industrial grade printer to, to teach the students or to do a research. And you have a 3D systems which is offering their own platforms. And Stratasys is much focusing now on the new materials, fiber reinforced composites, and so on, other materials. And people seems to take in it more uh, serious than a few years. Why? Because this technology, the status is especially so. Why? Because still they have uh, one or two patents uh, um, on this uh, extrusion based system, but majority of the patents got expired. Uh, but anyway, this is the status of the material extrusion based uh, technology. And now we will move on to the next uh, uh, class that is the sheet lamination based uh, 3D printing process. So the name is suggesting you that the raw material feedstock may be a sheet or a laminate basically, right? So, and there is a huge development in the sheet lamination based systems. So like, uh, though it was started with a scratch based material or a paper based material, now it has been migrated to metal. Uh, it has been even going, uh, say, you, 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 you have a lot of, uh, say spoke to work on the sheet lamination based uh, systems. So uh, probably you may come across this kind of um, let's say a setup with uh, uh, though this technology is almost outdated. The LOM, the laminated object manufacturing, has outdated long back, but it has uh, come into a different uh, say. It has opened a different uh, opportunities. Uh, the the base technology remains same. Means like. Um, um, then people earlier, they used to use a laser, but cutting a paper, a laser is a costly element. Then they have come out with a kind of a blade, uh, a knife to cut the, the powder, the, the paper based material. That, that's the thing like MCAR, there is a one company. So the MCAR Irish company, they have come out with replacing almost the, the works with the same principle, like, uh, stacking the, um, uh, say laminates uh, the, the and then getting it uh, done through a, a, um, a knife so i think you can better understand the process by playing this video
probably you might have noticed one limitation of this technology and one exception using a statement that uh, zero percent wastage or a, uh, but here uh, this technology is slightly different technology like you maybe say cross hatching the um, other than your cross section means that that will lead to a lot of wastage in the material uh, that is the only one concern about this uh, so anyway you you, you have um, say a selective deposition lamination from MCOT, which you can even produce uh, a beautiful colored, uh, um, say basically just made out of paper uh, material, but you have a different colors of the papers. So then even you use uh, uh, print colors and print adhesion, adhesives to laminate that and cut it. And, and you, you, you this have a photo uh, elastic colors has been uh, say uh, getting printed in, uh, along with that. So you you have this kind of uh, printers and ultrasonic. Uh, basically, it is. Uh, I think uh, the other speakers are going to cover uh, with this uh, much elaboratively the uh, ultrasonic welding and other techniques. Uh, so I'm not going to touch that. But you, our title suggests that there are some composite uh, things. Then the carbon fiber composites through uh, this uh, technology. I will try to say uh, explain this process uh, even better i will play this video i don't have much time to i will play this video better you can understand possible objects technology enables additive manufacturing of fiber reinforced composites for making production parts the cad model is sliced into layers and each layer is converted into a digital bitmap layers are printed onto fiber sheets using a clear fluid and thermal inkjet technology. And a high precision positioning system guides the inkjet heads. Polymer powder is applied to the fiber sheet, adhering to the printing fluid. Excess powder is removed, leaving behind polymer in the shape of the bitmap. This process is repeated for all of the layers of the part. Sheets are stacked, heated to melt the polymer, and compressed to consolidate the part to its designed height. Through a mechanical or chemical process, the uncoated fibers are removed, revealing the part. So in this way, you can even process the, uh, but uh, it, it seems like not in a single step, maybe, maybe a long fiber fabric and then the bone plastic matrix material, and then you will be making very stronger and tougher and very big sized components. That's quite interesting to, uh, but uh, there will be a, um, what you call the wastage. Uh, uh, then I already mentioned that that should be, that statement uh, should be exempted with this uh, sheet based system. You have a certain wastage of material here. And if you see the recent developments of this, uh, the uh, Fabrisonic company who jointly ventured into the EWS and, and Solidica, and this is for basically a metal based uh, printing, which is ultrasonic based system. I think uh, Professor Kumar is going to elaborately explain these issues and other stuff, but this is recent development and renewed interest in paper based machine at the low cost by car Irish company. And other solid state EM methods were being investigated. Uh, so this is some of the recent developments of sheet lamination based system. And now we'll come to the powder bed. Uh, why I put this powder bed, still the powder bed, uh, the, the see the roots of this powder bed has come from the polymer printing only, but not the metal. Further, it has been um, say extended to the, uh, so if you can see the initial patents uh, uh, from the say Carl Decker, so that was the uh, basically a, a patent on this uh, uh, say SLS technology that is selective laser sintering uh, technology, which now we are uh, putting under the powder bed fusion. So the powder bed fusion, um, though it started with the plastics, now it is very popular with the metals. Uh, the other speakers are going to touch this, but the my intention here why I kept this is a plastic now even ceramics can also be but maybe with the great difficulty or with the we know that the um uh, but I'm not a metallurgist or a material scientist but definitely you have a difficulty in ceramic that should be processed uh, um uh, if you see the 3d printing perspective 
So maybe metal may be easy to process than the ceramic. Maybe it may be wrong also, I'm not sure. But definitely you can find. Um, uh, so this working principle is a straightforward. So do you have a, a powder, it has been spread and you have certain IR heaters to preheat sometimes need not be necessary uh, or sometimes or even could be uh, a, a laser will be used to sinter rather than to melt the powder particles. Straightforward uh, working principle. So you, you have a nylon based uh, materials uh, and even you have uh, a certain um, say uh, ceramics or composites you can make uh, you can mix the um, say uh, uh, the uh, fiber glass or you can you can even go with the composite based uh, uh, printing so the you can you can mix your uh, things and make a powder and then get it printed so yeah you have a certain ceramics here through the powder bed system so this is uh, used in a silica silica carbide uh, ceramic with of course with the infiltration as i already mentioned so even you do have an indirect sls method uh, like uh, which uh, you are going to get only the green part and further it has been uh, melting it in a sacrificial kind of organic finder has been um, say uh, removed and then you have basically polymer ceramic composite so you can have so but even with the slm technology so um, the higher laser energy and the uh, lower porosity materials but so far this is limited success in the ceramics that's what i have been putting this so you have a certain challenges with the ceramic powders that it should be processed through this but it is well known um, established for the metal metal alloys and of course polymers also so you have the silica silica carbide part by the direct sls and alumina part with the indirect sls and of course some of the alumina based uh, ceramic uh, materials so so it, you doesn't think that uh, the powder bed is only meant for the metals or only meant for the powders even it could be done through the ceramics right so that is my intention to project here and you have a lot of advancements are coming up with this powder bed system to increase the productivity normally you um, do not perform uh, lazing and recoating simultaneously so you have a lot of setup time so consuming in a powder bed based system, but you have of uh, these two people come out with an idea. Why can't even uh, lasing action uh, during reporting? So that's that's the thing where it may happens to 55 percent times faster than the, um, the 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 existing systems. So maybe um, maybe you can you can see a lot of developments uh, in in a hardware side in the in the recent times, or maybe in the future you can expect. Uh, so you can see a recent development. So many metal, of course, SLM. You, you have a several players in the powder bed system with the metal uh, things, and you have a limited polymer machines, of course, from the uh, 3D systems are years, and new companies of uh, say entering into this market, and significant R&D investments in this powder bed system, and open versus closed uh, machine architecture. And high speed sintering very soon you can see the, the speed the existing speed um is not that much great even not great even it's a very slow but definitely you can see a high speed um a sintering very soon and ge has bought the morris technology that is for their uh, um aero component manufacturing even which we discussed uh, some of them like uh, part consolidation aspects so this the GE case studies. And then the last one is direct energy deposition. Of course, uh, it may not be much <laughs> um, uh, to discuss here. Uh, why? Because if you talk about polymer, but definitely it's not meant for a polymer. And definitely it is for a uh, metal uh, predominantly, but but definitely there are some ceramics can also be uh, done through this. Uh, uh, but I'm not going in depth uh, into this technology. The Manjai is going to talk and the Professor Kumar is going to talk all these aspects. But we have a certain ceramics can also be done through this, uh, say, process. Like you can have a titanium carbide. So you have a composite ceramics, uh, say, uh, TIC, uh, and pure ceramic like alumina, and composite uh, matrix like iron. So you, you can even uh, mix nickel. Say iron, uh, say carpet, tungsten carbide, and zirconia, even hydroxyapatite, carbon nanotubes can also be done through this. Um, uh, one of the process called lens, the direct lens deposition. 
So these are the, um, say you have electron beams or now replacing with the laser beams uh, that is quite happening in this uh, scenario. And manufacturers are exploring the market, the laser deposition kits and added to the uh, existing machines and fire access controllers of these uh, uh, heads are now it's coming up and increasing like say uh, overhaul and the repair applications of this technology and new build standards just published. So you can, you can find some of the recent developments on the this DED uh, system. So you can get much uh, explanation from the other speakers about this DED and the metal. Well, you have, I think, two or three, three, three uh, metal uh, uh, 3D processing uh, sessions we have, and one maybe the production methods and the characterization. So means now onwards, we are entering into uh, the full 3D printing processes and of course applications along with that and the challenges we are going to discuss. And uh, and let me come to the last part of my presentation, the post-processing techniques. So I thought that I can include some of the post-processing techniques here. Why? Because uh, say um, you, you know the post-processing is going to be the, uh, the crucial thing in 3D printing. Even sometimes it may go 30% of your investment. I mean, 30% of your production cost, the, the product cost may go towards post-processing, sometimes 40%, 50% also. So then we need to much worry about this post-processing technique. And simultaneously, not only cost and your quality uh, is greatly influencing. So which we have discussed several, um, say, defects or the um, say errors uh, during uh, metal processing event in our uh, previous uh, uh, design uh, aspects which we discussed. So definitely we can bridge that some of the um, say errors or the defects, whatever you call, can be uh, make up or can be uh, say adjusted with uh, some post processing techniques. Uh, definitely we can do that. So if you could not control during processing, during designing. So this is the last uh, opportunity in terms of post-processing. So you can very well uh, say bridge that gap. So you have even 70% cost, even I, um, I said maybe a less figure, figure like the 70% of the part cost may come from the post-process. That, that's the first thing where we need to much worry about this post-processing um, so normally you may neglect this, uh, uh, but you may neglect as an academician, but, uh, but, the, but the industry perspective, definitely it is the most important rather than which directly goes to the application, the end usage application. Now that is what you are calling this as an additive manufacturing uh, technology. But anyway, so you, you have um, say FDM process, for example, just I will give an idea, but I'm not going to explore all these post-processing methods. Just an understanding. So, uh, so you may have uh, use a cutting operation um, and and uh, dissolving of the supports basically. So you you see in as two folds here the the post processing to remove the excess supports or to uh, detach the part from the substrate also comes under the post processing. But sometimes you need to enhance the surface uh, 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 rough finish or mechanical properties, physical properties, um, microstructural properties, and definitely you may even go for other post-processing methods. Uh, you try to understand the two-fold applications of this uh, uh, post-processing uh, methods, and you do have a solvent vapor uh, to be used, or sanding can be done, or bead blasting can be done, tumbling can be done, supporting can be done, painting can be done on the on the uh, uh, extrusion based system like FTM and you have an SLS system and removing the powder bed and removing the supports uh, can also be and bead blasting, sand blasting, tumbling, machining can be done on the SLS uh, fabricated parts and coming to the VAT based like SLA system like washing and post curing. This is a compulsory step otherwise you cannot get an 100% uh, solid part still you can find some jelly kind of uh, uh, or, or liquidus kind of, um, uh, if you touch it, you can feel that. So definitely every time it should be post cured uh, in a UV bath. So that is mandatory. And of course, watching a bit of uh, uh, chemical, a bit of, um, um, so the, uh, 
the this is basically a chemical reaction right so whenever there is a chemicals then we have to be cautious we have to be careful anyway so you you have um, say we need to remove the supports and coatings can also be done here and jetting like uh, polyjetting uh, so uh, dissolving the support material and binder jetting depowdering de and debinding sintering all this will come under uh, say post processing methods so you can see some of the depowdering um, so the removing the um, the part from the powder bed cake of uh, or even abs plastic uh, this is the um, the as built component and after solvent vapor uh, has been coated, which you can see how uh, beautiful it has been. But basically, this is as built component. And nowadays, you have these kind of post processing methods. For removing the supports, how do you get remove the supports? So, and nowadays, you can have more simplified post processing methods now. Um, even it could be a, a, a special link or, or, or release ink, or you may even uh, further say. Um, say you, you use of these, uh, um, which you can see how, how you are able to enhance your uh, products uh, through this uh, post processing methods to even further jet and ink or colors onto this. But you never expect to make these FDM parts, how you may wonder how it has been come out, right? Say then that is because of the post processing um, that uh, you have a certain people to uh, resell this kind of post-processing for the FDM or for any polymer-based systems. And even you have support removal and surface finishing. This is the FDM part and after removing the supports and finishing, and this is the SLS metal part and after removing these supports, then which you can see, uh, and there is a post-process, there is a company and they are exclusively uh, supplying this kind of a post-processing equipment. So you have, um, say here, let's say two perpendicular single axis just jet uh, streaming inside uh, and compressed air and even detergent and suspended solids providing the targeted blast. So you, this is not a machine. This is a post-processing machine. So then uh, you, you have a lot of business towards this post-processing uh, thing in the recent times. It has been gained a lot of attention. So. And you can even improve the surface finish. So the importance of the surface finish, as we know that improving the corrosion, oxidation resistance, surface uh, friction, wear resistance, tensile strength, say uh, bending fatigue, uh, say you may have a biofilm adhesions or cellular adhesions or appearance purpose. So you need to uh, further improve the surface finish. So this is the example before the uh, uh, surface finish has been done as built. This is the scenario. And then after finishing, which you can see. And some of the methods which can improve the surface finish, like uh, uh, like sand bath blasting, polishing, machining, say uh, vibratory grinding or uh, abrasive flow machining, short pinning, blasting, chemical etching, electro polishing, vapor smoothening, and you have a electrodification uh, uh, deposition, dyeing, and you have a spray and dip coating. Another, so you, you can have a lot of, uh, uh, say, attention in the recent times. You can have a color variant here, which it has been, say, one of the automobile, uh, automotive, uh, say, applications. So where you can have a lot of, uh, say, uh, investment or a lot of interest towards improving the surface finish. So if you are comparing um, the conventional methods uh, with uh, uh, 3D printed parts and which the surface finish is going to be play a vital role. Can it be um, bridge that gap which is on par with the conventional manufacturing methods? So then which we need to adapt all these uh, surface finishing or the post processing methods to bridge that gap. And when you can have a dry electro polishing, so which you can see the area value initially, uh, you see it may be, it may be around uh, say 10 to 20 uh, RA value as built, for example, but which you can see this is less than 0.1 micron. Uh, uh, the After this, uh, say, dry electro polishing, you can even get less than 0.1 microns. So that is what where you can, uh, this is a titanium, uh, say, spinal implant. So that has been printed and further it has been improved the surface finish almost like, uh, say, submicron. 
uh, RDA value that you are going to get, but you never get this in a as built component. Typically, it may be a five micron, ten micron. Through a, uh, I'm talking about through a powder bed system, but DED it may be still worse. Uh, but again, it depends on the type of technology you're using it, how much uh, the RDA value you are going to get. Even further, you can have um, this is as built component, which is less than seven micron um, uh, through SLS system. Uh, and then after, say, um, a laser uh, uh, polishing on this uh, area, you, you know that a particular, this is a, a, a knee implant and where you need to have a certain portion should be a polished one, which may take a loads or the other purposes, but let it be the same, um, say, uh, surface uh, that you're going to get, maybe because of uh, the other reasons, uh, um, which may not be taking a load or maybe for uh, osseo integration purposes. So if you have a different bi uh, biology aspect, so you may have a different requirements altogether in your product. Say some, somewhere it should be more uh, load bearing and somewhere it should be more, um, um, say, osseo integration purpose, which we need to build or um, say light weighting, you may need to do a lattice structure based thing you may go uh, replacing that with the lattice based design. So then you, that is very well done through this uh, 3D printing. Otherwise you cannot do uh, uh, done through a conventional manufacturing systems. And you can do a uh, see complex geometries. Uh, so the micro uh, scratch free and you can have uh, these kind of um, systems. Now it is super uh, finishing methods, uh, super finishing can be done um, uh, even with this kind of uh, uh, surface finishing systems. And even you can have FDM printed, uh, say on antenna, this is one of the applications where even you can see uh, the PLA plastic has been coated with the protective paint. So further, you can see the enhancement in the surface smoothening, which improves an antenna for performance. This is an application used in an antenna um, the functionality of the antenna performance has been improved. So because of this uh, of finishing that surface uh, smoothing you have done after uh, 3D printed uh, parts, as been parts and then further it has been done. And then we need to talk about certain application challenges. Uh, even in fact, we have discussed in during the design, um, say lecture in the last lecture, but still um, you can even say, see, uh, some of the fabrication challenges. The fabrication challenges, so even lies from the material preparation. Uh, say means why I'm talking about this is, so definitely uh, your, your feedstock preparations uh, matters a lot for in order to get your, uh, say, uh, accuracy or the surface quality or the, uh, the, the uh, mechanical or physical properties that you are looking at. So right from the feedstock preparation, so whether it has been made as for the standards. So, and again, and again, you may get, sir, you said that you don't have, uh, we don't have much standards in this area. So then how do you ensure that it has been uh, prepared as for the standards? Yeah, you, within uh, the standards for available, limited standards, which may be for feedstock. Yesterday also I have given uh, some, uh, say, uh, ISO STM standards for feedstock preparation of various materials. So even you can follow that while uh, preparing your feedstock itself, like say, maybe a powder based. I think the next lecture of Manjay is going to talk about those aspects, the material, uh, the powder, how you may be atomization and other um, say uh, methods, how do you prepare? And then while preparing your powder itself, then we need to uh, say, follow that standard. So you, you have an average grain size, the, the, the size of the particle or the, let's say, uh, why? Because it depends on your, uh, say the flowability, the flowability of the powder. So then it dictate a lot. So you so then which your material type, powder size, powder flow, uh, purity, flowability. So if it is a powder based system and you have a different ball game, it is a filament. Uh, and if it is a liquid uh, and you have a different, uh, it is a laminate or the rod, then you have a different uh, uh, challenges here to have a feedstock. 
and the design challenges we elaborately explained uh, uh, during the last session uh, say that is geometrical challenges overhanging challenges supporting support material stand uh, challenging constraints minimum size of the feature hole or ribs then we have thoroughly discussed these design challenges uh, uh, in, the, in the previous lecture so that, that's what where we need to much uh, say focusing on each and every boxes of uh, this uh, 3d printing to so get the best quality so then why you are talking about this means say you say said that it is a push button approach yeah maybe push button approach approach wise it may be push button but if you are not uh, uh, taking care about these things and finally you maybe end up with uh, the bad part or bad failure or say maybe um, then you need to uh, properly organize your layout even i said like we have faced a difficulty here in the recent time to uh, process uh, aluminum alloy on the metal printer so the reporter because of the the orientation that we kept the samples so it has uh, say damaged our part so then slightly we change the orientation so then that's about your layout and organization of your say um, uh, parts that is getting built uh, fixing your position in your build set a uh, build layout right so that is the most important thing so how do you chamber getting filled and then whether it is any problem with the recorder or the roller which it is striking damaging your part like which you you have uh, other challenge here to work on the layout based uh, challenges and of course during processing which uh, like uh, the energy densities that we have discussed uh, for a powder bed system and it may be uh, anisotropy in a material extrusion like polymer based system like that so then in order to um, say overcome those defects or those challenges so maybe shrinkage warpage uh, say so delamination you have a several problems normally you come across then how do you get uh, say ensure that it is free from all the errors so definitely we need to work on several parameters maybe around 180 plus parameters um, uh, if you talk about metal i this is i'm talking about the metal um, powder bed that to metal powder bed system i am targeting and and i'm i'm talking about that but it may be a dif uh, different story slightly if you talk about ded or if you talk about other uh, processes so but which we need to even uh, the 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 energy source related parameters um and and your um, uh, layer thicknesses and your uh, say uh, air gap or uh, hatch space you you have uh, several parameters that is going to judge your quality and and your accuracy and your mechanical properties and physical properties which we need to even work on those process parameters and come out with the best uh, set of process parameters sir do you have any, doesn't have any uh, process parameters set suggested by the vendor so definitely it is subjective and somebody was asking in the la last uh, uh, class some questions like so can it be uh, so definitely it is subject to matter and it will vary from uh, say one geometry to other geometry and several things which we need to even and varying from composition of material so it is also varying the you you have a, such a sensitiveness or the implications which you you talk about these uh, um, say uh, challenges or the implications which we'll uh, discuss then that is during processing and during post processing just now we have discussed like say um, even you go with the heat treatment process, short painting, polishing. So in order to uh, uh, fill that gap, whatever the defects or the um, say some sort of uh, defects has come in your uh, part while fabricating. So some extent you can make up uh, to bridge that gap, maybe in enhancing the density, like you got only 95% density, but you need 100% dense. So then use uh, heat treatment or then use uh, heaping or whatever, uh, then to improve your, say, uh, density, physical properties or mechanical properties, then you, you need to work on this post-processing. But post-processing, again, it may uh, increase the cost of uh, your production, but then you need to um, strike that balance. And then ultimately your uh, accuracy, surface quality, material properties, the implications or like say, um, there is no complete set of design or layout or material machines and the process rules. So you, you said that, sir, you have these many areas, then 
uh, somebody even asked yesterday itself hey, can it be can you suggest the best uh, um, way of doing it so definitely it is a kind of uh, 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 as of now you don't have any guidelines or the rules saying that hey you use this for the materials hey you use this for design you use it for the layout and use it for the process you use it for the post processing methods absolutely absolutely don't have uh, uh, the that is the status of uh, uh, the the uh, uh, the parameters or the rules that you talk about absolutely as on date there is no such complete set of uh, or optimal set of these things absolutely not but that is opportunity for a researcher to 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 do a research right so everything is optimized and everything is there then what you are going to do as a researcher right so you don't have any gap to work on that so you, you, you somebody i can see uh, a lot of uh, faculty and a lot of um, uh, research scholars so maybe looking for a problem so you have several problems here to 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 pick up right say and then you can have <clears throat> so so practitioners they are they need to have a tailor uh, um, production of this process for the each uh, object so that is another implication so you cannot say um so you one time you optimize the parameters for this material and for this uh, uh, product so again so can it be tailor made so again still there is a challenge here to uh, so generalize or to come out with uh, say such sort of situations uh, and adoption uh, such a new newer materials or the uh, say which we need to even uh, spend a lot of r and d even it will take minimum one year why because even we bought the machine but i don't want to disclose it but anyway this is the thing where normally you come across like say um, you you can uh, say bought the machine you may bought the machine saying that so this machine has tuned to this uh, material so and so so and so material and so on so and so and so great and if you change your grade of the material and all together you have to develop the parameter set but the the supplier or vendor may not be giving that uh, say you why because you have tailor made your material and you have customized your material so then they don't uh, support uh, but you that is your headache so you, you you need to say build your own parameters so it may take uh, say time to uh, build that parameters right so that's the, another implication or even um, so so 5 to 10 years maybe the made to a less effort maybe still if you are working with a kind of a specific application say uh, even i mentioned in one of the aerospace applications like where the certification and where we need to um, do a, a a sort of uh, qualification of the parts but even it will take five years sometimes 10 years of time to uh, say uh, altogether complete your certification and qualification and simulation uh, models uh, uh, as a shorting development times in the future like you you have a lot of scope even i mentioned during my design lecture so you have a lot of scope to simulate um, these models uh, so then that is a quite uh, challenging and quite um, say a more uh, in more for uh, the scope for your research so where you can uh, simulate or modeling uh, of these uh, multi physics models so you can do a lot of stuff so you have to consider several things into your mind like the surface tension right and 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 say viscosity maybe depends like should you work with the liquid or a, or a extrusion based systems then you are say uh, viscosity and jetting systems viscosity is going to play a vital role and you have a surface tension when, when you work with the powder bed based system and you have a lot of uh, temperature gradients inside so you you have to consider all this right say otherwise you may be what is the curdling effect or the shrinkage factors or allowances or distortions like say which we we have even thoroughly discussed in the design aspects and heat dissipations staircasing effect professor krishna and has explained very um, beautifully uh, how the staircasing effect has been say and then entropy that is what we discussed for the design for polymers uh, especially if you have that problem of anisotropy uh, in z direction of course volume contraction micro melting so you have uh, several things that we need to consider uh, these are all the challenges uh, that normally uh, come across it is not like as 
like a push button and do uh, do uh, the it, it may be a push button as operational uh, protocol but but this is the real time scenario so anyway you have uh, um, less standardization of the processes and machine to machine and run to run there will be a variation and consistency of the source material uh, we discussed and process control and error corrections uh, this is also the other challenge uh, like um, uh, in situ you can you can uh, adjust the process parameters to maintain um, a, a, a melt pool a constant melt pool for example or can can it be uh, compensated these errors uh, uh, in situ or or um, say while uh, building the, the components but but the post processing as we discussed and it may impact your cost time quality certification of the parts this is a major challenge and new potential hazards especially for the powder base powder bed system or even wherever you have certain chemicals for these or uh, there will be a chance to form a VOCs and then which we, we, we need to uh, have uh, a special safety and the um, the other things which we need to focus on integrity of the digital design uh, so that is like uh, the we need to uh, have uh, so somebody may tamper your uh, designs like say the, 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 the designs are more in a digital in nature somebody may tamper then we, we need to have certain blockchain technology to secure your data maybe that's what people may be looking uh, uh, so you as an education institute you may not be much bothering about this but if you are working in a company or if you are working for uh, say defense sector or the um, some army or some confidentiality in, in your nature of work but definitely you have to ensure your designs not getting tampered or nothing not getting um, say uh, say pirated um, by the, which we need to even have another challenge. So more, though it is going in a digital um, say uh, thing, but you may invite <laughs> these kind of uh, say problems. Um, so altogether, it may we need to rewrite our cyber uh, laws, right? So maybe because of more democracy, sometimes more democracy will lead to a lot of difficulties. Uh, the same case, even protection of your IPs and the your um, say patents or intellectual properties so like that so anyway um so i have done from my side but i don't know whether you have a time to have questions it's already two hours i took but it's over to you manjaya thank you sir so thank you for giving a, a brief and uh, inaugurated the how materials polymer materials composite materials how ceramics can be used for 3d painting and all you are given a, a good very guidelines for manufacturing the part from the polymers and ceramics and as well as composites and uh, thank you very much sir participants if you have any queries uh, please uh, unmute yourself and ask your questions no i can see one question in the chat box uh, so somebody uh, malik no actually six, six four is already there but six five is also there Six six four, very well known. Six five can also be done. Titanium, titanium six four is a well known, and and it has been proven and it has been, but six five can also be, can also be done. It's not wrongly may I mention, six five can also be done, but six four is more, um, predominantly used uh, titanium alloy, six four. But six five can also be done. Yeah, I can find only one question in the chat box, Dr. Manjaya. Yeah, participants, if you have any queries, you can unmute and uh, please ask the. Or you can put it in the chat box also. <laughs> 